everyone in our previous lecture we have seen what is corresponding angles and hope so your concepts will be clear now uh, regarding the corresponding angles now today we will see uh, how you can find the corresponding angles if you are given with one angle and another thing is if the two lines are parallel in our next lecture we will see how you can find the corresponding angles if the lines are not par parallel but in this lecture we will see how you can find the other angles if only one angle is given now there are some uh, important things that you have to keep in your mind we have discussed in the previous lecture that the corresponding angles are the angles that occupy the same relative position at different intersections now from this diagram as the diagra diagram is given we, it is clear that angle a and angle e are at the same relative position uh, uh, in the diagram and the lines are also parallel when the lines are parallel the corresponding angles are congruent so it means angle a and angle e will be congruent to each other so i can write here that angle a is equals to angle e so that means if angle a is 68 degree then the angle e will also be 68 degree so here we need not any computation to find the angle e so i can write here clearly that this is also 68 degree now what about the rest of the angles as we don't know about the uh, in case of b and f they are also corresponding angles but we don't know b or f so that we can say if one angle is known we can find the other but here we have to use a technique now one concept that you have to keep in your mind here is if i see this circle this circle is like this and this so a circle is made up of 360 degrees a complete circle is equals to 360 degree and a half circle is 180 degree so if i write here the half circle this is a half circle and this is equals to 180 degree now it is clear here that the trans transversal has divided this semicircle into two parts but not equally so from this we can say that this orange line can be written as the sum of angle a and b that is angle a plus angle b it is that will be equal to semicircle and the value or the angle of the semicircle will be equals to 180 degree semicircle is half circle so full circle is 360 half circle is 180 degree so if we sum the angle a and b we will get 180 degree so if i write here that angle angle a plus angle b is equals to 180 degree so from the above we have already have angle a we can write the value of angle a as 68 degree plus angle a, angle b will be written as it is as we have to find the angle b that will be equals to 180 degree now if we apply the arithmetic operations on it and move this 68 degree on the other side of the um, uh, of the equality we can get angle b so we can easily say that here angle b is equals to 180 minus 68 180 minus 68 so what it will be it will be equals to 112 degree so we have found the angle b as well so angle b is equals to 112 degree now if you check whether this angle the, the value of this angle is right or not you can add angle a and b and it must be equals to 180 degree so let's check it 68 plus 112 is equals to 180 degree so it means your angle is right so we have got angle b as well now it is clear from the diagram that angle b and angle f are the corresponding angles as they are occupying the same relative positions so i can clearly write here that angle b is equals to angle f that is equals to 112 degree so i can write here angle f as 11 12 degree so we have found the four angles out of the eight now what about the rest so in order to find the value of angle c d and g and h we here we have the concept of alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles now alternate interior and exterior angles have the property in case when the two lines are parallel so so first we talk about the alternate interior angles what are alternate interior angles so in this case the alternate interior angles will be angle c and angle e this is one pair of alternate interior angle these you know what are alternate as their name indicates they will be on alternate position across the transversal 
the as one is on one side of the transversal and the other is on the other side of the transversal and they will be inside the the and these angles uh, will be inside the two lines so these are in, uh, alternate interior angles so angle c and angle e are alternate interior angles similarly angle d and angle f are the alternate interior angles and in case when the two lines are parallel and intersected by a transversal these angles are equal it means angle c will be equals to angle e and angle d will be equals to angle f so from here we can easily say that that angle c is equals to angle e and angle d is equals to angle f so angle c is equals to angle e it means the value of angle c will be 68 degree so i can write here it is equals to 68 degree and the value of angle d will be equals to 112 degree 112 degree as the value of angle f is equals to 112 degree so this was about alternate interior angles now what about alternate exterior angles so alternate exterior angles are the angles that are on the exterior side of the two parallel lines which are cut by the transversal so the exterior side is basically the side where the angle a b and angle g h resides so from here when the two lines are parallel the alternate exterior angles becomes equals to each other now what are the alternate exterior angle here here angle a and angle g are the alternate exterior angles and they will be equal to each other clearly angle b and angle h are the alternate exterior angles and they will be equal to each other in case of when the two lines are parallel keep this in mind this property is applicable only when the two lines are parallel to each other and are intersected by a transversal so i can write here that angle a is equals to angle g and angle b is equals to angle h and what it is equals to angle a is equals to 68 degree that will be equals to angle g so angle g is also 68 degree and angle b is equals to 112 degree that will be equals to angle h that is equal to 112 degree as well so i will write here as 112 degree and angle g is 68 degree so this is how you can find the value of the corresponding angles if only one angle is given and the two lines are parallel to each other in our next lecture we will see how you can find the corresponding angles if the two lines are not parallel to each other so that's all from today's lecture thank you